Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Honorable Governor Neil Abercrombie. Oh, I have an introduction for you. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Governor Abercrombie came to Hawaii in September 1959, the month after statehood, to be a teaching assistant at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where he earned a master's degree in sociology and later a PhD in American studies. He has served as a state representative, senator, Honolulu City Council member and congressman prior to being elected governor of Hawaii. Thank you very much for your service. On December 6, 2010, President Barack Obama appointed Governor Abercrombie to the Council of Governors and the President's Task Force on Climate Preparedness and Resilience. A select group of governors, mayors, and other leaders charged with developing recommendations on how the federal government can better support local preparedness and resilience building efforts. Following comments by the governor and a report on Hawaii's fiscal and financial condition by the Director of Budget and Finance, Calvert Young, uh, the governor will welcome questions from the audience. So please um, uh, make a note of that, what questions you have, and at the end of the program, he will entertain those questions. So please join me in welcoming Governor Neil Abercrombie. Thank you, Sherry. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. Thanks for that wave of enthusiasm with the uh, aloha. I think you're going to have it by the end of this presentation, be, which will be very short for me, I assure you, because I want to get to uh, the work that Calvert and Lewis and the entire team uh, that is represented here today, and I say that the, the, the whole cabinet here have been doing. I uh, said to Sherry on the way up that uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, among other things, it's, aw it's awesome, it's great to look forward to doing something when you've promised somebody you were going to do something and then you're act actually able to carry it out. Uh, it's almost three years to the day, almost three years to the day that uh, I met, uh, that I was inaugurated as governor and that we met uh, among the very first uh, 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 folks that we, we got together with after I was sworn in was as a result of, of Jim Tolleson's uh, uh, kind invitation and the previous board, uh, Ginny and others, uh, who were kind enough to say, well, look, can you, can you put us in the picture of where, you, you might be, where we might be going for the next f uh, four years uh, fiscally? The, the briefing uh, underway, uh, particularly from uh, uh, Fred Pablo, uh, Josh Wish is here representing taxation, and, and uh, Calvert and uh, and, uh, and Josh were, were uh, uh, in my mind's eye to uh, get moving on, the, uh, on, on budget considerations. And uh, the sorry spectacle that we were faced with uh, was coming to full fruition. Uh, I can tell you, and you will see in Calvert's presentation, that when I spoke to you about uh, all of us being in a canoe that was on the verge of capsizing, that was not just metaphorically uh, hyperbolic. Uh, that was an accurate de depiction of the government as a business. We're told over and over again, I was just mentioning to, 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 to Aaron, uh, many times we said, well, why can't you run government like a business? You can't run government like a business because government is a business. You must run it as a business. And we're in the business of government. And we're dealing with infrastructure. We're dealing with agriculture. We're dealing with land and natural resources. We're dealing uh, with, with infrastructure problems, both physical and fiscal, that have to be addressed. And I can tell you, and, this, and, I, and, and the sad part about this is this is not really news to you. And it wasn't three years ago that we have failed in this state utterly up to this point to deal with the realities of unfunded mandates to deal with the realities of unfunded liabilities associated uh, with pension and, and, uh, and health care uh, premium costs, of, of, of having ac keeping accurate books about what the actual expenditures are with regard to deficits and, and not papering them over. Uh, the, the, this, this business of government was not being run in a business-like in a, in a business fashion when we came in. And I promised you then that that would end. 
And it's easy to say. It's another thing to do. We're here today to report to you three years later that we've accomplished that mission. And you'll see that uh, very, very shortly. I want to emphasize that, that in the government business, there's no room for being a spectator. This is, you can't stand on the sidelines. You have to come to grips directly with it if you're going to deal with the realities associated with unfunded liabilities. If you don't, then you end up like this. You end up like the state of Illinois, where they, until they just passed a, a bill uh, uh, within the last, within this week, attempting to come to grips with the issues that I, I, I and Calvert will be de uh, are, are dealing with right now. They were selling bonds to pay their operating expenses. That's how they're not dealing with the deficit that they faced in a given year. And as for their indebtedness, uh, they're in the tens of billions, even the hundreds, approaching $100 billion in unfunded liabilities that they have to address. Lewis is shaking his head because he knows what we had to come to grips with. We were in the same situation. The numbers might be bigger for Illinois because there's tens of millions of people and, and the numbers, but it's just different zeros. We have a much smaller tax base here. We have a much smaller group of people that have to foot the bills and, and meet their responsibilities here. And so we came to grips with it. And we went immediately after the deficit because my theory was, and I, and I shared it with you, and I, I, and I uh, reiter I iterate it to you today. My theory was that we had to stop the, the hole that we were digging of, 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 of uh, deficit financing in the state budget. We had to do that in order to show the credit rating agencies that ruthlessly rule what our interest rates are going to be and how we're going to be rated. We had to show them that we stopped and that we were going to stabilize our finances and then we were going to go forward. Many of you in this room that are in the, uh, associated with construction know I had to hold back on the construction, and I said I would. Remember, Jim? I said I wasn't going to put out the, uh, the uh, uh, construction projects until I could prove the, to the agencies that were going to hold our, have our credit rating in the palm of their hand that we were stabilizing the finances, and that's what we did. We stopped the, the budget, uh, the, 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 the deficit chaos, and we stabilized our finances. The credit rating agencies recognized that. We went into the bond market at that point. We began to put out the infrastructure capital improvement projects uh, at, at the lowest interest rates in the, in the history of the state. We, we got savings on the basis. We, 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 were, uh, we, we sold our, our bonds at premiums uh, and so that we were able to get uh, savings that, that I applied to the debt. I didn't put it back in, 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 in cash and then try and, and grab that money. And you'll see about our recapitalization plan. You'll see what we, what we have done in terms of directly addressing all of these problems. We had to make hard choices and tough decisions. And that's what I think leadership is all about. And so what we have to do and what we did do is embrace what was necessary in order to accomplish that. We couldn't have done it, we couldn't have managed it without a team that was going to be resolute in their focus and worked with me to see to it that we carried through on this plan. Now, it required patience, it required steadfastness, and as you know, in the process, a lot of people didn't like it, and a lot of people uh, had no faith that it would work. But I can tell you today, and we will get to it momentarily, that the 225 to $50 million deficit that we faced three years ago almost to the day has, has been turned into an $800 million plus positive balance as I speak to you today. I give great credit in this process to uh, Calvert Young and his team. And I'd like Calvert to come now and uh, report on Hawaii's fiscal and financial condition because I think this has set the foundation the, the, and, and the solid floor, financial floor, for the initiatives that we have to 
uh, put into, into effect in Hawaii today if we're to move into that energy future, if we're to make sure that we can uh, fund education as it, sh as it should be, that all the programs that we've had to put in abeyance can be, can be put back uh, into effect. We're ready, we're re we, we are ready to do that right now. And I think when uh, Calvert is finished with his presentation, we'll be happy to entertain any questions uh, in that regard as to where we're going, what we're doing, and how we're going to accomplish it. Calvert? Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm actually uh, very pleased and honored to uh, be included on this uh, agenda of the, co of the chamber to uh, take some of the governor's speaking time and be able to share with uh, the members of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Hawaii's current financial and fiscal condition. Many of you have heard this presentation or parts of this presentation over, over the last several months uh, because this presentation was actually taken from the state's credit presentation to credit agencies and bond investors. Uh, the state just executed an $830 million bond transaction uh, that closed at the start of uh, December. So I, I'm sure many of you folks have seen it. I'm actually very glad and honored uh, to tell you that our state of Hawaii uh, is in a very good financial and fiscal condition. And many of us uh, probably know that already, or at least you get a sense of it, but our state, our state uh, as a business organization, and I think of all of us as shareholders in that organization, should be very proud and comfortable that we are part of an organization that has a significant amount of improvement over the last three years and is in a current situation that is enviable across many states in the country. <clears throat> and in my personal opinion, I would say, you know, the better things are currently, the shorter people's memories get. Because where we are right now, and the governor mentioned uh, some, of the, some of the statistics, we have to remember this actually was less than 36 months ago that the state of Hawaii was still in the midst of the economic recession and our company uh, that we're all shareholders of was in a pretty dire financial and fiscal condition. Statistics like unemployment rate were rather high. Uh, maybe you don't even remember that the state of Hawaii and our counties have implemented furloughs. That may seem like a long time ago, but it was less than 30 months actually that the state of Hawaii still had uh, furloughs and or pay reductions. Our county governments had furloughs all because revenues were in decline. <clears throat> to get through that fiscal year alone, the first fiscal year of 2011, the first fiscal year of the current uh, governor's administration, the state of Hawaii is actually looking at a fiscal shortfall of about $220 million to close fiscal year 11. In fact, when we took office, uh, when I took the seat in my office as the fi state finance director, the fiscal year had already had passed five months had already gone. We had seven months to derive savings in that current fiscal year to save $220 million uh, due to uh, budget shortfalls or revenue shortfalls that were coming in that year. We had collective bargaining contracts, all of them with the exception of one collective bargaining unit in the state of Hawaii was up for renegotiation uh, that in that June. So the end of the fiscal year meant additional collective bargaining efforts. <clears throat> and the state had embarked on a program of reduction in forces, uh, hiring freeze, closing of programs, a number of tax revenue enhancements at the time to generate additional revenues. <clears throat> and all of those were necessary. They were not unique to Hawaii states and municipalities across the country had to employ those various methods and it was as the governor put it all of us being in the same canoe because it were it not for the contributions of public sector worker unions all of us as taxpayers and shareholders uh, government programs and constituents that support those programs we would not have been able to implement a lot of those measures that have put hawaii in less than three years into a condition that has already been recognized across the country as a significant turnaround. <clears throat> the governor mentioned that the state of Hawaii in two, for 2013, fiscal year 2013, which concluded June 30th, 2013, the state is reporting a positive ending balance on its financial plan of in excess of $880 million. If you think back to less than th 
three years ago when the state was looking at negative $220 million in a revenue shortfall. That's a significant turnaround that's not on par for any state in the country. $1 billion plus turnaround in three years. When you think of a general fund budget, our state general fund budget is just about $6 billion. We're talking about a significant turnaround in a short period of time. Many states are still in the grips of coming out of the recession. <clears throat> this has allowed us over the last three years to restore a number of critical services that during the heat of the recession had to be eliminated. But we did so strategically. It wasn't about returning government services for the sake of restoring them. Because as you know, a lot of government services have not been restored. And it's strategic because frankly, the way we approach government finances now is we want to fund for sustainability. We don't want programs to be funded during the up cycle unless we know that they can be supported and sustained during the down cycle. And that has been a problem and a challenge for governments across the country and including in Hawaii. There are a number of financial metrics and structures in the state of Hawaii that have been ignored and her, or have been uh, <clears throat> not addressed for decades. And it's not any particular administration in the past. It's just that Hawaii has not been focused on building its financial structure as a business entity, specifically the reserves. The state had to use what meager reserves it had in 2011 to get through that fiscal year to the point where they've been effectively depleted. But over the last several years, we've been focused on recapitalizing those reserves. And the state of Hawaii is now in a position where we can start on a targeted approach to rebuild capital reserves so that we have a state that for the future and the long term is better sustained for future economic down cycles. And part of that is to address the number one issue that is across the country and is most relevant for all governmental entities, whether they be states or municipalities, and we're hearing a lot more each year on it, and that is unfunded liabilities in the pension and health insurance area, or OPEB, other post-employment benefits other than pension. <coughs> Deputy Director Salaveri and I just actually came from a, conference, a national conference that's being held here in Hawaii with other state legislators from across the country, including Illinois, including Ohio, and Puerto Rico, and New York, and Rhode Island. And I will tell you that all of them have heard and identified Hawaii's moves in terms of what we've been able to do for the past three years that have headed off a lot of the noise and the drama that you are hearing from states and municipalities east of the Rockies right now. And that is significant because we've been able to avoid a lot of the fear of our pension system collapsing. And it's not, this is not an issue related only to government employees because every one of us in this room as taxpayers, even if you don't know anybody or you don't have any government service, will be impacted, I guarantee you, with increased taxes if our pension system fails or if the health care, health fund system for the state and government retirees is insolvent. To the point where the state of Hawaii was recently downgraded in May of 2011 for three different reasons, the top three, citing of which significant uh, default in the unfunded liability area. Hawaii as a state is one of the worst, the worst states in the country for unfunded liabilities and pension and health care. In terms of on a per capita basis, the liability on a per capita that affects all of us as shareholders, and on a basis of funded ratios, how significant or insignificant the corpus in all of these funds are. Hawaii is one of the worst. And on top of that, over the decades, decades, Hawaii has not demonstrated any fortitude to address any of those problems. They have not been unknown. Just, we just have not demonstrated the willingness to be committed to dealing with this problem because it takes generations to build the, to create the problem. It will take generations to resolve it. But, it the, but the mile of a thousand steps starts with the first one. And Hawaii has, has already begun on that journey. Standard & Poor's recently has, as recently uh, as uh, August actually, has already identified Hawaii as a model state in terms of uh, significant improvements to improving Hawaii's overall credit condition because we've taken on 
of significant milestone to deal with unfunded liabilities on the pension and the OPEB side. <coughs> the economy has turned significant. We're probably right now at what will, when we look back retrospectively, could be conceived as the peak of the current economic cycle. <coughs> and Hawaii has led the country, no doubt, in terms of economic recovery. Driven by tourism, unemployment is, is low. In fact, it's close to pre-recession levels currently. Uh, this has been matched with significantly high levels for individual income, which puts Hawaii as in top 10 nationally. And we've set records in the tourism industry each of the last two years. So last year was a banner year for tourism and a number of statistics. 2013 will eclipse those marks for 2012. But now we're seeing additional industries starting to really take over for what, where tourism has led us the last two years in the construction area. Unemployment rates in Hawaii have always been rather low comparatively nationally. But this graph here, and I'm just going to zoom through the next one, these are other states that are, one, higher rated states than Hawaii. Florida, Louisiana, Nevada, South Carolina. They are higher rated credit states than Hawaii. They each have destinations within their states that are tourism oriented and driven, just like Hawaii. Hawaii has lower unemployment rates than all of these states coming out of the recession. They also have, Hawaii also has higher per capita income for them compared to each of these states. And we are committed towards further investment to continue to drive those statistics, to make improvements in both of those statistics, in, including on the construction side, because that is the next uh, leading industry for Hawaii. There's no, I don't think we will fear that tourism will decline. But the rates of growth that we've seen in tourism over the last several years, they are not sustainable as far as growth increases. But it's certainly optimistic to hope that tourism will stay at the current contribution levels to our overall economy. Where we will help it is in the construction area. And the state has been on a very robust capital campaign for the last uh, six years. It's been accelerated over the last three. Uh, the state of Hawaii has expended more than a billion dollars each year for capital projects. Uh, <clears throat> the current state budget has more than $2 billion budgeted for capital projects in this fiscal year alone. And more than 40% of that $2 billion is in the transportation area, airports, highways, our harbor systems. It's all about rebuilding our infrastructure as well to support the next economic cycle. The military will continue to be a significant contributor to our overall economy. It's estimated that federal expenditures related to the military equate to about 10% of the entire state's GDP. Even amidst the talk of sequestration and congressional dysfunction going on in Washington related to the budget, Hawaii has fared pretty well in terms of the amount of uh, federal cuts. In fact, Hawaii is actually looking that it could potentially net positive uh, even in the midst of talk of sequestration, even in the midst of talk of Budget Control Act reductions, military presence in Hawaii, considering the pivoting and refocusing of military assets globally to the, Air the Asia Pacific region, Hawaii is geographically positioned and strategically positioned to benefit from that. Uh, military presence in Hawaii in 2012 was the highest number of military pres uh, personnel in Hawaii since World War II. And 2013, it's likely to increase. All of that will mean that even under the midst of, at the national level of reductions in Department of Defense budgets, Hawaii could actually uh, net out positive in terms of increased federal contributions. Again, tourism right now is, could potentially be at its peak in the number of statistics in terms of visitor arrivals, revenues per room, visitor expenditures. We may have already peaked in those statistics. Uh, and we would expect that we would continue to see tourism maintain the current level of occupancy uh, throughout the state. Hawaii, if you look at tourism on Oahu, it's, we are near full occupancy effectively. And the room, the area that tourism will grow likely over the next several years will probably be uh, additional contributions from our neighbor island visitor plant. Again, looking at these, uh, the other states that have, that were higher rated, 
Um, Hawaii has higher average amounts in a spending per trip. We have higher occupancy rates. Um, where, the, the, if you look at this chart on the right, where we were in terms of the number of air seats coming to Hawaii, we were back to pre-recession levels. In fact, we, we matched the previous peak back in 2009, uh, I'm sorry, 2006, somewhere around 2011-12. And we've actually, coming into 2013, we actually have more air seats coming to Hawaii now than the previous peak. So we are establishing a new peak. That's going to get, uh, there will be a, a boundary on that, of course, in terms of room availability. But all of these signals are still there that we have a, we still have a very strong and contributing economy and industry with tourism. And our airlines are supporting that because they've already added more than 8% air seat growth just in the up through the current uh, through the current year to date and this doesn't even include new destinations that are coming on that should leapfrog rates of growth for Hawaii potentially namely expanding markets into China uh, Korea Taiwan <coughs> real estate has stayed very stable it's been uh, more so on Oahu than say in the neighbor islands but if you look at this graph going back to pre-recession levels, uh, Hawaii's uh, real estate has actually been very strong, and this is just a graph just for Oahu. Compare that to other, to, again, to the other higher rated states across the country where they felt in the real estate market the effects of the recession, a declining uh, home values, which is, accounts for as much as 60% of every American's net worth is in their home value. Hawaii has actually fared well across the recession, and if anybody's been trying to buy real estate over the last 12 months, um, you definitely see improvement on the buy side. Well, actually, I think you definitely see improvement on the sell side uh, today than where you were three months ago, six months, or even nine months ago. <clears throat> and if you're on the sell side, uh, days on market are actually very favorable for sellers. We have one of the lowest um, sell side uh, days on market, compa even compared to these other uh, locales that I mentioned earlier. So in conclusion, <coughs> what I want to talk to you about is what does this mean going forward in the near term and what does this mean for the long term? In the near term right now, we are in the midst of presenting our FY15, the next fiscal year budget to the legislature. We're deliberating for what can be afforded to be financed. But I want all of us to understand that while we have 840 plus million dollars as an ending balance last fiscal year, and it is the highest level in the history of the state of Hawaii, our approach to get to that level has not been about spending to restore programs and just to spend the money because we've been able to accumulate it. It's been about developing programs that are sustainable across economic down cycles and planning for the next down cycle. So uh, without uh, being the spoiler alert of what you can expect out of the budget, I will tell you that uh, what you will see in the budget will be components that are financially responsible, build upon the current states of, of Hawaii's fiscal health improvement of our financial condition, and that we have an eye for the long term, beyond our administration, for the next generation of our children, our grandchildren, the next generation of finance directors for the state to build upon a Hawaii that can be at the le as leader, a leading state in the country among states and as a model for financial development. And so when you look at budgets or you hear from departments about what programs the evil finance director didn't fund, or that the governor couldn't fund. Uh, you know, we want you to. <laughs> it's, it's really not one of those where we want anybody to think that just because the government has been able to turn itself around to this point that we've reached the ending finish line. This is a continuum that will take decades and generations to build Hawaii to the financial condition that we would want all of us, us as taxpayers and as shareholders to take pride in our state and our company that we are all embedded and have an embedded interest in. So um, with that, 
I want to turn it back over to the governor and, uh, and our cabinet team if anybody has any questions uh, or comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calbert, stay up here, if you would. I just want to conclude uh, on, a, on a couple of notes that uh, I hope the both of us have, have established, uh, which is that it is one thing to turn something around. It's another thing to make it sustainable. Uh, I want to emphasize to you that we are taking the approach, uh, not the short term. You know, what can we do? There's an election coming up. I understand all that. But I'm going to be, be coming to the people on the basis that we are looking to the long-term interests and in setting the, uh, the foundation now that's going to have prosperity uh, for everybody. And one of the principal ways we're going to do that is we will end uh, unfunded liability uh, in terms of the f of funding, which is now in the 50s. We intended to take 100% uh, uh, financing, 100% funding, of, of all the uh, uh, unfunded liabilities. Now, it was, it's like a mortgage. It'll take us 30 years to do it. We've, we've set a plan in place that if, 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 we're, if, if people will stick with us, if they'll, they'll trust us that we, we were right about putting our paddles in the water and all pulling deep and pulling together, we can take this canoe to, to the fiscal shore that we all want to get to. But that means we have to stay, di stay disciplined, uh, and we can and we will. Uh, we we uh, uh, also will find ourselves in a situation in which we will not be Detroit. We will not be uh, Illinois. We will not. There are cities across the country right now that are trying to get into bankruptcy. Can you imagine? They're trying to get it. It's like an NBA team, a basketball team, is trying to lose games so they get the first pick. The first pick here will be picking off the taxpayer, which is what's going to happen. Don't think they've solved anything in Illinois without that. And I can tell you that we will end the unfunded liabilities without raising taxes. We have a fiscal game plan that, if it's followed, is going to carry through. Can you uh, just elaborate on that a little bit, uh, Calvert? So <clears throat> the way we do this is that all of us in this room, especially on the private business side, this is probably not a foreign concept to you, but the state has to manage its current financial budget relative to a six-year forward-looking financial budget. That may seem like uh, that's pretty obvious to everyone in here who's ever worked in the private sector. I will tell you that is not how government does budgets. That is how we are doing budgets now. Because when we talk about preparing for the next economic down cycle, we have 840 plus million dollars today. We won't have 840 million dollars six years from now. Of course, we hope to have more but there's a strong likelihood we'll have less. But if, you forward, uh, if we spend a dollar today on a program, we want to be sure that dollar is going to be there six years from now to support it without raising taxes. And we have a program that already anticipates and funds and affords to deal with the unfunded liability, this 30-year mortgage the governor mentioned, which has previously not been paid by the state for unfunded liabilities in the health care system. So. We want, we are committed, the administration is committed to funding it. We've embedded it in the, fi the six-year financial plan. It balances on the financial plan. And the rest of the budget, everything else, the, to whatever needs to be utilized of the 800 plus million comes after already affording uh, our unfunded liability payments. So it's about developing programs that are sustainable across multiple economic cycles and managing our current fiscal year budgets relative to future fiscal years. And then just one more thing uh, before we go uh, to the questions, the question of reserves. It may seem like a, a strange uh, point to make, particularly when you're in a, a government business in, in which you're trying to satisfy the, governors, uh, uh, the, the customers, spend the money. Of course you want to do it. But if you don't have the reserves, then you won't be able to deal with the situation uh, uh, effectively like we had to face uh, in 2011 when Calbert came into the room and the Department of Taxation came in the room and said, Governor, we don't know how much money is coming in. We don't know how much money is going out. We're not sure we can pay the bills at the end of the month. We're going to have to go into our reserves, our rainy day fund, our hurricane fund. You remember? See, remember, memories are short. We had to take all that money just to be sure that we could pay our bills. We have set a financial plan, a six-year financial plan and beyond, 
that will not only recapitalize those funds, but build our reserves. And Calvert, can we finish up with just uh, how we're going to, what we intend to do to have as reserves uh, here in the state of Hawaii? Keeping in mind now, we're not an oil state or a natural gas state. We don't have those revenues flowing in. We've got to do this ourselves. So if you think back three years, our state actually had very paltry levels of reserves um, to start. There's actually only two formal reserves in the state. That's the Hurricane Relief Fund and the Emergency Budget Reserve Fund, or what many of us will hear talk about at the legislature, the, quote, rainy day fund. Uh, prior to the recession, the levels of, those re of both of those reserves equal to only about just shy of $190 million. When you think of the state's revenue, general fund revenue on any given year of about $5 billion to $5.5 billion, and you do the math, it equals to less than 5% of, of our state had as savings for down cycle. Let's relate it as anecdotally to our personal household finances. If you just think for a moment, how much does, uh, do you make each year in terms of salary or compensation? And then do the math of taking 5% of that, and that's the money that you have in your savings account in your bank. I don't think anybody in here would feel very safe or secure having that much as your level of savings. In fact, you know, the rule of thumb is we want, we want, emergent, we want our households to have three months worth of uh, your bills, right, in savings, or six months, or eight months, whatever the parlance is right now. That was not our state of Hawaii. We have to build back the state of, the state of Hawaii's reserves to the point where the finance director now has set a target that the state of Hawaii should build its reserves to equal 10% of its general fund revenues. That will mean the state of Hawaii currently should have somewhere about $600 million as its reserves in, either, in a combination of the Hurricane Relief Fund and the Rainy Day Fund. Now, we're not setting a time specific to get there. Right now, to close FY13, our state of Hawaii had $55 million total as reserves. We will have more than $200 million in reserves by the end of this fiscal year because we are appropriating monies from savings into the reserves. But it will take, it will take years to, for the state of Hawaii to get there, and that's fine, that's good. But we need to be committed uh, for the long term that we will continue to build our reserves. Also, what we want is we want for the state of Hawaii, for the finance director, to manage the current fiscal year, whatever that fiscal year is, so that the state will achieve an ending balance for that fiscal year equal to 5 to 10 percent of the general fund revenues for that fiscal year. So that at the end of that fiscal year, whoever the finance director is, whoever the governor is, they will be able to point to Hawaii having a cash balance equal to 15 to 20 percent of general fund revenues from the previous fiscal year. And if you relate that to your household income and savings condition, that's feeling a little bit more comfortable. If you talk about states, that would be very enviable. In fact, if having reserves or cash balances in excess of 10% would put Hawaii in amongst the top 10 states in the country to be able to achieve that level of balance on any given fiscal year. And would be even a far, minor, far larger minority if you took out mineral producing states. So all of that, before I turn back over to the governor, is I want all of us to feel comfortable that there is a financial plan that we can work to. We are only in the third year of, of this thousand year journey, if you will, of how far we can get in the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years is all dependent upon how much fortitude we all have to stay on that plan to address a lot of these financial problems that took decades and generations to build, and we're only now starting to address. Thank you very much, evil finance director. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You can see what fun I have in the morning when I come in and get, uh, when the cabinet sits down and, and we ask Calvert to give us our report cards. But. Uh, so um, we'd be happy to entertain questions if you have them. If you don't, you don't necessarily have to have a question. I've, I've discovered that many times if someone offers an observation that they'd like us to comment on, that, that uh, 
is just as illuminating and perhaps more so than it might be otherwise just from a question. So if you have some thoughts that came to you in the, in the course of, of the presentation, we'd be happy to comment on that as well. We think we're going in the right direction. And we're committed to it, I can tell you that. I, I, I get, while we're getting to the question, I am not turning around. We're not going to make the same mistakes in the past. We are not going to take the fact that we have turned this thing around and say, oh good, let's go back and do everything that we did before so we can go back in the hole. That's not going to happen. Yeah. 